Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Breaking news out of Durham this morning. Two people are dead and three others are hurt after two separate shootings. We have team coverage as police have been at both scenes all night long. And a few isolated thunderstorms are in our southeastern counties. I'll show you when we'll see another round of that later today. And families who have lost a loved one to fentanyl will gather and rally here in front of the state legislative building this morning to bring awareness. Just ahead, a look at their demands to lawmakers. And the Canes and Kaniacs getting ready for the next round of the playoffs. The team is moving on after finishing off the Islanders in Game 5 at PNC Arena. So for the fourth season in a row, the Carolina Hurricanes are advancing to the second round of the playoffs, causing all kinds of chaos, mm -hmm. the good kind. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It is 6 o'clock. Great to have you with us. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, thanks for making us part of your Wednesday here. Canes fans waking up. They're excited. Another, it's a rematch with the Rangers mm -hmm. from last year, looking for a different result this time. Elizabeth Gardner over in the WRL Severe Weather Center right now. We're seeing those showers pass to our south now, just about out of here. Yeah, a little bit of lightning with this, but they are on their way out. It's kind of a slow moving band here. There was a little bit of uh, water on the roads when I came in uh, to work this morning through Raleigh. Uh, but most of this is now down to the south uh, from Goldsboro southward here in Wayne County, uh, from Clinton northward here in uh, Sampson County. It's almost out of the viewing area except for southern Wayne County. A little bit of thunder and lightning with that. We'll continue to have this boundary that produced those showers and storms overnight, bringing us that chance again this afternoon. So it'll be right after lunchtime. After that, high pressure builds in, and then I'm tracking another front that comes in over the weekend, and we'll talk more about what our chances are for rain this weekend coming up. Expect some sunshine uh, on and off between now and lunchtime, just depending on where you are. The farther north you are, the more sun we'll see. And then starting at 2 o'clock, a few isolated showers or thunderstorms pop up again, same spot where we're seeing that right now. And then that moves out right around dinner time or so. Take a look at this. This view is just incredible. Incredible. And we have this little bit of fog that's just sitting here uh, right there at Dix Park in that low spot with the uh, uh, city of Raleigh right behind. I'm not looking at low visibility anywhere. This was just a, a pretty spot I wanted to show you. You can see that behind uh, Jeff and Renee too. 64 is our temperature heading out the door, mainly in the mid to upper 60s heading out. We will see another warm afternoon with high temperatures in the mid 80s. And again, we'll take a closer look at the weekend so you can try to plan around it coming up. Ken? All right, Elizabeth, at 6.01, you mentioned those uh, showers that we experienced overnight and you can see from this traffic map the communities to the south and east of the triangle uh, breaking up to wet roads this morning down there in Goldsboro and Dunn so you might want to be careful if you're heading out this morning just to uh, give yourself some extra time as well. Elsewhere around the triangle that uh, situation that we told you about on I-540 just within the last five minutes it actually cleared it was from the Lewisburg Road on ramp to the westbound lanes at 540 within the last five minutes clear sailing now and to that end let's give you an idea of what was happening out there at 540 and Lewisburg Road the uh, activity was right there on the on-ramp and like I said it cleared within the last five minutes if anything pops up on our traffic maps we'll keep you posted Ken thanks we're following breaking news in Durham two people including a juvenile are dead and three others are hurt after shootings that happened less than two hours apart. The first happened on South Street. The second was on West Club Boulevard. We have team coverage this morning as police are at both of those scenes. We begin with WRL's Kelsey Coffey who is on West Club Boulevard. Kelsey. Renee, one man is dead and two other men are injured after a shooting at this home on West Club Boulevard in Durham. Durham police are uh, going in and out of this home investigating. They've been doing that for the past several hours. In the last half hour, I mentioned that more police arrived here at the scene, but at least one of those police cars uh, has left within the past half hour. So uh, this house is right across the street from Club uh, Boulevard Elementary, if you're familiar with this area. But let's take you to video now from the WRL breaking news tracker. Police Police got a call about this shooting just before midnight, and we're working to find out the names of each of those men who were shot. Police are still searching for a suspect, so we'll keep you updated as we work to find out more. And there was another shooting that happened just three miles away on South Street. Nick Perlin is there in the WRL breaking news tracker. Nick, any updates on what's happening there on your end? 
Well, Kelsey, a lot more has actually just happened on this scene that I'm at right now on South Street and Umstead Street. You do see those two uh, Durham police units. They've been here all morning. But take a look. This is actually happening right now. You can see investigators focusing in on this car right here. You can see them shining flashlights and searching through the windows, still look, trying to figure out what exactly they're looking for. Seems like uh, there's some evidence that could be in that car that can help them lead, uh, help them um, figure more out in this investigation. But I do want to take you to this video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker. We do know that this shooting happened around 10 last night. We know one juvenile and one adult woman was shot and taken to the hospital. We sadly know that the one juvenile did die. That one adult woman is expected to be okay, but we're still looking to see if Durham police has any suspects. And of course, if these two uh, shootings are related, of course, we're going to stay on top of this. And once we have new information, we'll be sure to update you. Reporting live in Durham, Nick Perlin, WRL News. We're also working to learn more about a crash that had part of I-87 closed overnight. The crash happened on I-87 North right near the Hodge Road exit. This was just before 1 this morning, and this is video from the WRL breaking news tracker. At least two cars were involved in that crash. All lanes of the highway reopened shortly after 2 this morning. Jeff, I want to bring our viewers into the WRL Live Center for some breaking news unfolding right now at this very hour. I want to show you this uh, vantage point video here. This is on UCLA's campus in California where you can see law enforcement here in the foreground and then there are people in the background. There is actually a clash between pro-Palestinian protesters and counter-protesters that have been unfolding overnight. There's apparently a group of counter-protesters that attempted to dismantle the wall of a pro-Palestinian encampment. Now I want to draw your attention to this screen over here. This is an aerial view of what's happening right now. You'll notice these groups that are here. You'll notice law enforcement there. But again, the clashes that are occurring are between the pro-Palestinian protesters and the counter-protesters, not law enforcement. We've only seen law enforcement ushering people in a specific direction there. You can see the camera moving here as some people are spotted across the street as well. We're still trying to get more specific information regarding any arrests that have been made. But again, these are just two dueling protests that are occurring on UCLA's campus, and it continues to escalate this morning. Chris, thanks. We are closely watching the campus of NC State, where hundreds of people marched in a pro-Palestinian demonstration last night. That protest started on campus and then ended at the Wake County Detention Center. Demonstrators gathered there in support of a protester who was arrested. The protest started at the Bell Tower before working its way up Hillsborough Street. Demonstrators eventually reached the Tally Student Union. Protesters say they plan to continue to use their voices to speak out and show their support for the Palestinian people. Tensions are high this morning at UNC Chapel Hill as well after clashes between police and pro-Palestinian protesters all day Tuesday. 36 protesters were charged with trespassing. It was the culmination of a day that started with police breaking up that encampment that had been on the quad for five days enforcing that deadline. The scene turned violent later in the day as protesters refused to leave campus. Police used pepper spray on some of those protesters and demonstrators took down the American flag on campus and replaced it with a Palestinian flag. The flag was later restored by campus officials. New this morning, police in New York have cleared a Columbia University building that was being occupied by protesters. This video shows the moment officers entered the school's Hamilton Hall. A student streamed this video showing officers removing protesters from the building. At least 100 people were arrested. There are no reports of any injuries. Families who have lost loved ones to fentanyl want North Carolina lawmakers to take action. They'll speak today about the dangers and what can be done to save lives. WRL's Laura Levine is outside the legislative building this morning. And Laura, these families say there is a need for more support and public education. Absolutely. Good morning, Jeff. And you can expect a very emotional, very passionate morning here. Those families who have lost someone to fit and all, they're going to have those photos displayed right here in front of the legislative building so that lawmakers can see the faces of people who have died in their communities. But when we take a look at the data, we're talking about more than 17,000 North Carolinians since 2013. Many nonprofits as well as advocates will be out here pushing for naloxone to be in every school in the state. 
paint. It's life-saving medication that can be administered through nasal spray if an opioid or a fentanyl emergency occurs in a classroom. They're calling on the General Assembly to appropriate $350,000 of an opioid settlement fund that the state controls and to provide two boxes or four doses of naloxone to all public schools. We spoke with Barb Marsh. She's the executive director for Fentanyl Victims Network, who's leading this charge. I would like to put faces instead of numbers in people's minds, because when they look at somebody who is young and vibrant and now dead, they're like, oh, that could be me. That could be my son. That could be my daughter. So today's press conference will begin at 10 o'clock this morning, followed by a meeting with lawmakers. Laura Levine, WREL News, we're live in Raleigh. A Kansas community will begin the process of cleaning up after a deadly tornado hit the area. The tornado touched down in Westmoreland, Kansas, which is about an hour away from Topeka. One person was killed. Three others were injured. More than 20 houses were destroyed as the twister ripped through the city. A temporary shelter is open to help people who lost their homes. Carolina Hurricanes are moving on to the next round of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. Canes beat the New York Islanders late last night at PNC Arena. 6-3 to three was the final, taking Game 5. And that gives the Canes the four-game-to-one win in that series. They will next have the New York Rangers. Coming up in 10 minutes, WRL's Aaron Thomas has some of the reaction from Canes fans after that big win. Plus, still ahead this morning, 10 after 6 right now, federal restrictions on marijuana may soon be loosening. What that could mean moving forward for the drug and its users. And May marks National Men Mental Health Awareness Month, the role that social media plays when it comes to your kids' mental well-being. And it's been a dry month for us. We finally start to see uh, our pattern change and getting into May. But it starts over the weekend with a better chance for rain and thunderstorms. I'll walk you through the timeline. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. We do have a band of showers and thunderstorms in our far eastern county. So from Goldsboro southward through Wayne County, uh, just the far eastern part of Sampson County and the very southern tip there. This is the same area that's likely to have a chance of some showers and thunderstorms later this afternoon, starting right after lunchtime and continuing until around dinner time or so. It's a 20% chance the coverage will be fairly minimal, but there could be a few isolated thunderstorms, nothing severe. We take a look across the area, varying conditions. It's fairly cloudy in Wilson right now at 60. We're looking at mainly clear skies in Durham at 64. It's 64 in Fayetteville also with a, a good bit of cloud cover there. Heading out the door this morning, temperatures are in the mid-60s. We'll climb into the mid-80s this afternoon. And coming up, we'll take a close look at our chance of rain this weekend. Ken? All right, Elizabeth, checking the traffic this morning. Uh, we got some really good news to report. Nothing but green showing up on the map in the capital city. All the major routes, the Beltline, I-40, 87 coming in from Rendell Free and Clear this morning. Elsewhere in the Triangle and Durham and Chapel Hill, 48, 85, 85. Nothing but smooth sailing this morning to that end. I want to give you a live look outside at 8885 and TW Alexander Drive. Uh, traffic slowing in both directions. No problems to report. Federal restrictions for marijuana could soon become looser. The Justice Department has started the process of making it a Schedule Three drug. That's in the same category as ketamine and Tylenol with codeine. Marijuana has been a Schedule One substance, the same class as heroin and ecstasy. The change could ease criminal penalties and help marijuana businesses bank more freely. A ban on most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy is now in effect in Florida. The new law went into effect just after midnight. The ban makes it a felony to perform an abortion after six weeks of pregnancy. That gives a woman about two weeks after a missed period to realize she's pregnant if she wants to get an abortion. An amendment to protect the right to an abortion is on the state's ballot in November. 
Today's May 1st. It marks the start of National Mental Health Month. And WRI's Michelle McConaughey is here with what you and your family can do to promote wellness and how social media, Michelle, could be getting in the way of that happiness. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. Psychologists say it's okay to not be okay. Encouraging people to reduce the stigmas surrounding mental health disorders and seek help. The National Institute of Mental Health estimates that more than one in five adults are living with a mental illness. This is data from the National Alliance of on mental illness reveals that one in six kids ages 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder every year. The um, self-confidence that we can handle difficult situations is something that if we can teach kids and have these experience for children that they get through difficult times, then as adults, when you're faced with difficult times, you're more likely to be able to cope with it. And because kids can have a harder time putting their feelings into words, psychologists suggest that parents take the time to talk to their kids, especially about the amount of social media that they're consuming every day. Experts also warn that levels of mental health issues like eating disorders and body dysmorphia, that could worsen as artificial intelligence and filters become more integrated into social media platforms. Michelle, thanks. Kaniacs are waking up reveling in last night's win against the Islanders. WRL's Aaron Thomas was there for all the action and shares the excitement as the quest for the cup now continues to round two. Do you see and hear this behind me? Cheerful Kaniacs certainly got their money's worth with this showdown between the Canes wow, and the go. New York Islanders. I want to go over some of the highlight moments just within the first five minutes of the first period you had two players score two goals. Of course this is sports so anything can happen. It did not take long for the New York Islanders to answer back and both teams were eventually tied uh, three to three in the second period. Now we get to the third period. You had two goals back to back just within nine seconds of each other. That certainly got the crowd rocking. Of course it got everybody living up to the name the loudest house in the NHL. And maybe tell us about that momentum, you know, when the crowd is hype, how it helps the team moving forward. Oh, yeah, it for sure it turns up the environment. It gets the team going. It gets them pumped. It, it's just a home field advantage, like they say. You know, once it gets loud in there, everybody Woo! wants it. Confidence. I mean, the guys have confidence right now. You can see it all the way down the bench, and they're a well-taught team. I mean, they're they got rod. <laughs> and you can see the result of the Canes defending, successfully defending the home ice. They will now advance to round two in the Stanley Cup playoff series. Aaron Thomas, WRO News in Raleigh. How many woos did you hear in that report? A lot of happy KDX there. Something to cheer about this morning. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center tracking some lingering and residual showers now pushing out of our area. This is a really slow moving little band here. There's some scattered light rain in a few pockets. It's a little on the heavier side. And there has been some thunder and lightning with this. We see this uh, steady rain here falling in Goldsboro right now and uh, on the south uh, as well. But it's really started to push out of uh, uh, Sampson County. It's out of Clinton right here in the southern tip of Sampson County. We're definitely seeing some thunder and lightning. That's going to be south of Garland. That's a fairly rural area there. So very slowly this is moving on out of the region. We do have a lingering boundary that will be with us and in the same place that we're seeing those showers and thunderstorms this morning, we'll likely see those start to redevelop after lunchtime up until around dinner time. After that, high pressure builds in with some dry and hot conditions Thursday and most of Friday. And then this front comes in and that's going to bring us our next best chance for some showers and storms. You can see we're nice and dry here at lunchtime. Partly cloudy skies. Once we get to around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we start to see these isolated showers popping up. Could be a, a thunderstorm along with that as well, but the coverage will be pretty minimal for us. Um, at 7 o'clock, we're all dry and we'll see partly cloudy skies overnight. And then Thursday and Friday are nice and dry, and then we get into a better chance for rain Saturday and Sunday. A much better chance than we'll see today. Um, hopefully we'll get some significant rain. It's just, you know, a lot of people have plans over the weekend, so it, uh, it can des definitely disrupt the plan. Uh, we've been watching that potential for some scattered showers even Saturday morning. Of course, we're proud sponsors of the Cohen Race for the Cure, so we're watching that very closely. By tomorrow, we get our short-range models, um, which are high resolution. They give us a little bit more definition. Um, here, instead of uh, the, uh, the view being so blobby, we'll have a better chance to know just exactly who and what time we'll see that. Mainly, we're going to see afternoon and evening thunderstorms on Saturday and Sunday. The biggest question is, will any of that 
uh, start earlier than lunchtime. So we're watching that. Um, could see anywhere from a half an inch to an inch of rain out of this. We definitely need it. We are behind for the month of April. So hopefully we'll catch up some in May. Uh, we only ended up with about an inch of rain in April at RDU, but almost two inches in Fayetteville. We're two and a half inches behind uh, now at RDU. But this is some good news um, for the month of May. We have the potential for above normal precipitation. Also above normal temperatures. We're definitely seeing that highs are in the 80s all the way across the board. 89 on Friday and again on Tuesday. Um, but again, some rain will help the situation. We may see some showers and storms uh, Saturday, Sunday, and possibly Monday and Tuesday too, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, at 621, all new into the W area traffic center. We're just getting word that Raleigh police officers are working a crash, and it just popped up on our sensors right there on Atlantic Avenue. Uh, right now, our sensors are not picking up any delays in that area. We're working to get a little bit more information. As soon as we get it, we'll update you in just a little bit. But elsewhere in the Triangle, Durham, Chapel Hill, all the major routes are free and clear this morning, delay-free. Thanks, Ken. We are learning more about what a second term for Donald Trump could look like in the White House, what he is revealing in a new Time magazine interview and the response from President Biden. And an unbelievable scene <laughs> at a Major League Baseball game. A beekeeper becomes a hero on the field. You don't want to miss this story. It's coming up in What's Trending. This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Home. A beekeeper in Arizona's workday ended in an unusual way on a Major League Baseball diamond. Ken Smith is here now with What's Trending. Ken. Uh, you know, play ball. Well, not yet. The start of last night's game between the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks was delayed because of a huge swarm of bees in the protective netting behind home plate. The team called in a beekeeper who was cheered by fans as he took care of the situation. Uh, he got to soak in the cheers again when he was invited to throw out the first pitch. How about that? Instead of a, is there a doctor in the house? Is there a beekeeper in the house? No, they had to call in this beekeeper. He was 45 minutes away at a T-ball game, at a son's T-ball game. You know, so they had to wait on that, but took care of business. And he's just, he's the hero. Saved the day there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he liked that role. I mean, he, he took it all in. Definitely. He was soaking it in. Well, how about this? Beavis and Butthead walked the red carpet in the Hollywood premiere of The Fall Guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Actually, that's the film star Ryan Gosling and SNL cast <laughs> member Mikey Day. They wore the costume from the now viral mm. SNL skit from earlier this month. Hilarious. Complete with the Death Rocks <laughs> t-shirt, skull, right? The, the skit has gone viral because... Nobody could keep it together. I had to watch mm -hmm. it because uh -huh. nobody could keep it together. They broke character. <laughs> they were laughing uh, and just couldn't bear, hardly finish the sketch. I think Ryan Gosling was tired of being Ken and then, wow, <laughs> resorted to Beavis. Okay, then. <laughs> that, that's a 360 right yeah. there. That's a full but turn. I like being Ken. How about that? And you You're are better at great it. at You're it. You're good at it. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Today, country superstar Scotty McCreary will be performing at his, his or performance latest hit on the Kelly Clarkson show. The Garner native will give a special performance of his Cabin the Solo on the show today. His first single off his new album, Rise and Fall, that's due out next week. You can see this appearance on the Kelly Clarkson show today, 2 o'clock on WRAL. Families who have lost someone to fentanyl will rally here in front of the state legislative building to raise awareness. Just ahead, a look at their demands for lawmakers today. And a few scattered showers still lingering in our eastern counties. This is the same area that could see some scattered storms later this afternoon and evening. I'll show you the timeline. And two shootings overnight in Durham leave two people dead and three others hurt. What we're learning from police as officers have been at those scenes all night. 